Okay, hello. Um, and today, uh, for the podcast, I am really delighted to be able to um, introduce Joe. Um, I met Joe. I had the the fortunate experience of meeting Joe at one of our coffee mornings when we were up in Northampton, and um, it was really lovely to be able to be part of a group that was willing to share their stories and really. Um, give people an idea of their experiences so that menopause didn't feel so frightening or alone. Um, so Joe, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for having me. Um, and today, Joe, we're going to talk about midlife crisis of women. That's the kind of topic we were, we're going to approach. Um, but first, before we do that, please tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, um, and, and then we can delve into why this topic is is important to you. Yeah, I mean, so I'm Jo Cumberpatch. I'm in Northampton, the UK. I have, I'm an accountant by training. I've worked in banking, in fast moving consumer goods, and then I had kids and it was like, I can't, can't do that life anymore so I started a small business that's been amazing but in the last couple of years I've realized it wasn't aligned to who I am who I want to be how I want to put myself out in the world so you could say this was my midlife crisis I've packed in the business I'm in the process of selling it um, wow. that's been my income you know and, and that's going um, and I've taken up some risky hobbies so paddle boarding cycling open water cold water swimming um, I'm off to Finland in a couple of weeks to go ice dipping. So I'm doing all sorts of things. So that's my kind of midlife crisis. But the big thing I've done is to retrain as a life coach, specifically working with women in midlife, because this stage of life, there is so much coming at you, children getting older or facing the fact that a family isn't going to be something that's in your life. Um, children leaving home, there's health issues, there's menopause, um, there's relationships, there's money worries, there's everything that's going on in the big wide world. And yet we are still being the carers for our parents, for our children, for our partners, for those around us. And I think this is a point in life we need to wake up and work out what's important to us. We can do all those things. We can still be that carer and be the person that everyone turns to. But we also need to fulfill ourselves and our own needs. And I've been selfishly pursuing that over the last couple of years in my own little way. And one of the ways is packing in the other business and starting a whole new one from scratch. So that is me. Oh, amazing. Wow. And good for you. Uh, I feel very happy that you're doing something that's making you happy. Um, and sometimes it's, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, my goodness, uh, wow, that's such a big thing to do. But I think sometimes when you you make that decision finally and you do it, that there is a sense of relief. There's also sadness and a bit of scariness, but there's a sense of relief from what I can from what I can sense from what you're saying. Um, I suppose I think the other thing that I just want to sort of point out really is with this podcast that I'm doing, you're not alone in doing what you're doing. Most of the women that I have been speaking to over the last, I don't even know how long, how long I've been doing the podcast now, it's been, it feels like forever and it's been amazing because I've met so many wonderful women and men, um, but it actually seems to be a very common thing that this time in women's life, whatever that age looks like, age doesn't seem to be relevant in this. It just seems to be something that happens to people at a particular time. And, you know, maybe we can kind of have a, uh, a chat about that, whether it's to do with the hormones and things, but they're actually ditching what they don't want to do anymore. They're really reevaluating. They're really thinking rethinking their lives and actually not being scared to make decisions and try things and do things that you know either they may have done in their younger years or actually would never have even considered before and because they feel like they're a whole different person is that something that you would relate to it's funny because I almost think I've got to this crossroads where I've given so much of myself to others and, and, and I've done it willingly. I, I wanted a family. I have a beautiful family and they are my absolute centre of my universe. But it's gotten to the point where they are my universe and actually I need to have something for me. Um, so, yes, I, I agree that this is this age, whatever it is, 40, 50, whatever that age is, there's a point when many people come to to ask, well, so what? what? What's my legacy going to be? What's the point? Yes, I'm raising three beautiful kids and they'll go on to have great lives. But what is it I'm going to leave behind? What impact am I going to make? And I'm very much wanting to answer that question and trying different things to see what that impact might be, small or large, both, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. And what would you say to people that might say, well, it's all right for you. 
you can do that because you know you can afford to or um you've got the support of somebody behind you know there's there's always those questions isn't there there's always a yeah but if i yeah but if i had this and if i had that and if covid hadn't come along or this hadn't happened um i would be in a different position and i'd be able to do it um we i think from what i again working with women working with um, the women that I've worked with over the years and doing the things I've been doing, I hear a, a, a lot of that, a lot of getting in your own way um, with a bit of fear and stuff thrown in. What would you say to women or men, but mainly women that follow this podcast, that that, um, that would be saying those things? I think what I'm learning is that I've put a lot of filters on my life and my decisions and sometimes, or a lot of the time, that's not how other people view it so if I ask if I think my husband won't like me doing something or won't support it I packing in one business and starting a new whole new one that's a big thing um actually it was a complete non-event for him he was like well that makes sense are you, are you happy do you think you can make it work what happens if you don't make it work okay you thought it through right fine what do you need from me and yeah I'm lucky he was supportive but I would never have if I hadn't had the conversation with him he wouldn't have had the chance to be supportive I guess is what I'm saying yeah. so Yes, maybe I'm lucky I've got a supportive husband. Maybe I'm lucky I've got some savings behind me. But this is not easy. This is full of fear. This could go very wrong. But everything in my life, if I look back, even the really dark moments, I realised there were silver linings. There were things I learned from it. There were um, resilience that I built. And so I'm just going to approach this the same way. Will I be doing it in five years' time? I think I will because I really feel passionate about it. But... If, it, if I'm not, I will have learned something from it and I will pivot to something else. So I think it's about having conversations with those that need to support you, but knowing in your heart, if this is something you sometimes logically doesn't sound like it's going to work, but if your gut keeps coming back to it, if you keep getting drawn to it, you need to do yourself a favour and explore it. Yeah, I think that's a really sensible, sensible approach, actually. I think, um, I think I suppose for me, I don't know whether this comes to you, but it's like that, you know, I don't want to live with regret of what if I had, what if I had, I think that what if um, is a, is a huge thing for me. And I think legacy as well. You're absolutely right. I think looking into the, and it's, it's, it's interesting because when I was younger, I always used to say, and then I had my, my children, I always used to say, I really want to be able to get on with my girls really, really well. Um, I don't want to be uh you know, I want to. I don't want to be their friend particularly. I want to be their mum first and foremost. But I want to be a part of their lives in a really productive and supportive and mutually respectful way. And that's something that's definitely happened. And I always used to imagine myself as well with, God willing, if I ever had grandchildren and I have one, um, you know, that what kind of grandma would I be? What kind of person would I be? Who, who would that? What would I? be bringing to that child you know I've done for my own children I'm continue to do but what would I bring so yeah for future and future that legacy and actually that's quite a powerful driver isn't it that that vision it's hugely powerful what you inspire your kids to do so I've got three boys twins who are 11 and a 14 year old <clears throat> plus stepchildren in their 20s one of whom lives with us plus a granddaughter and I know that some of the things I'm doing is are inspiring them and it may be this I'll, I'll never do that but we're having the discussion uh, we talk about all sorts of things at home from menopause to suicide to um and whatever needs to be discussed we're discussing it and we're getting it out there so that hopefully their their lives are wide open they've got every door they can they can they just know they've got choices even when it seems there's no choices there always are and that's all you need to feel better is think right what, what are my choices what can I do with this I can turn around and go back I can go sideways I can go over I can go under and that's that's a skill I'm teaching my children and whilst I want them to do well in their exams and I want them to have you know good jobs they enjoy I want them to be resilient and to be happy and to be fulfilled and that mm -hmm. might look like that could look like anything it's not mm -hmm. necessarily going to look like a corporate job with six no. figure salary but I very much doubt it will look like that and I'll be very yeah. very happy if they make a choice that follows their their intuition and their gut and they're mm -hmm. happy yeah no that's lovely I love that being able to go over or under around and side I think that's perfect so then just kind of what does what does a getting down to the midlife crisis bit what does that look like what does that feel like how would how would somebody know that this is what's happening to them because unless they know that how would they then know how to reach out for help 
It's a funny one, isn't it? Because midlife and crisis are two two quite emotive words. Put them together, they're very um, they paint a picture, don't they? So midlife in itself, we can put there's loads of generalizations and assumptions and stereotypes we will immediately start to think of when we think midlife. Mm-hmm. And most of them are negative, if we're going to be honest. Yeah. If we yeah. then add crisis on the end, we're all thinking immediately balding middle-aged man buying a sports car taking up risky risky hobbies possibly leaving his wife just all of that that, that's the image we get painted when we think midlife crisis the image for women is well there's no real equivalent of that we continue to quietly do what we've always done putting others first um and making sure that everything ticks over nicely and we get a lot of satisfaction from that i'm not going to lie that we don't i i we, we do but we don't indulge ourselves. We we I would never dream of buying a sports car. My husband did buy a sports car a few years ago. Lovely little blue MG. There was a discussion had, but you know, I was like, I can't see the point. Two seater car, we've got three kids. But if it's gonna make you happy, do it. And then five months in, I got a phone call from the police saying he'd had an accident. He was waiting for an ambulance, car was written off, um, and used to get to the hospital. So long story short, uh, the car was a write-off, and that was the end of his dream of a sports car. Um, So he had his midlife crisis. It lasted five months. He survived it, which is good. And our marriage survived it too. But we don't do that, do we, as women? We're too busy juggling everything. There's just a mental load, let alone actually what we have to do. Um, And then we add in the huge, ginormous, massive emotional and biological milestone that is menopause that hits us. Perimenopause, menopause, postmenopause. And that's really interesting to to me. I'm, I'm, I'm really spent a lot of time reading and um connecting about menopause and the more you share the the better it becomes because you know that you're not alone you said that at the beginning but menopause is a funny thing it comes from the the greek word men meaning month and pauses meaning to stop or cease and it basically gives no greater meaning to this stage of life than the fact our monthly bleed stops that is teeny tiny tiny part of what menopause is and basically we are told the message out there is changing but the message out there for so long has been menopausal women you have served your purpose now step aside let the younger generation whereas men at this age they're at the peak of their careers they can still have babies they can still they just do, they can do everything we we have to step aside and we often treat older women as if they're less valuable members of society and that is not how i feel but we regard it regard it as something dreadful that's eventually going to happen to all of us and there's nothing we can do about it so much we can do about it yeah, yeah so for years western medicine has minimized the importance of menopause and we just talk about it as a as a biological transition We maybe offer some medication and that's it. There's nothing more to worry about. But you and I both know there's a lot more to it than that. What I find really interesting is you look at other cultures. So you look at the Mayan women in Belize, Mexico and Guatemala. Guatemala, sorry. They acquire actually a new status when they enter the menopause and they become spiritual leaders of their communities. They're the wise women, the repository of information and wisdom. That is so much nicer and in Japan, menopause is known as konenki. And I, I apologize if I've not pronounced that right. But translated, it means ko, means renewal and regeneration. Nen means year or years. And ki means season or energy. So it's about renewal of your energy. Mm-hmm. And research shows that Japanese women experience very few symptoms of menopause. Now, that could be down to a lot of things. This innate belief that this is a great stage of life to be entering, plus their diet and exercise and so on. It's not. It's, it's going to be a lot of things that contribute to that. But knowing that hot flushes and other symptoms don't have to be mandatory or that they can be managed through lifestyle, through um, HRT, for instance, the question I've been posing over the last six months or so is do we have more control over our own menopause than we actually assume? And that's something that I I think midlife, so much of midlife is wrapped up in what is going on menopause. We don't realise, we think we're discontented, we think we're disconnected, we think our our low moods and our, um, you know, lack of sleep and so on we, we don't connect them but all of them are probably connected to this huge biological biological shift that's happening in our bodies yeah yeah i, th- I mean totally absolutely um uh, and yes you know th- that shift that you're talking about we tend to look at it as external factors which is really interesting as well so you know we'll be anxious and we'll look at what's happening around us in our life we'll become low mood we'll look at us we'll become dissatisfied with with work because you know it's not it's not doing what it used to do um and so actually i think that change in hormones that is happening um estrogen progesterone you know testosterone that the the you know that shift in estrogen which has kept us exactly as you were saying very happy mostly very kind of you know generally ticking along and bubbling on with life as we would whatever our happiness whatever our happiness looks like might be different 
but it kind of cocoons us into this into this being that functions and works very very well in whatever they've chosen to do in that time but as soon as you start stripping away that estrogen you then open up um all of those things and we're able to see things with very very different eyes i believe and i think that is where it comes from it's that opportunity suddenly um the 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 confidence if we allow ourselves to do it the opportunity which is i think what you're kind of saying where you get into midlife and actually what you're doing is seeing the opportunities where they arise whereas before you wouldn't have seen them because you would have you you, you know your your uh your brain and your function at that point in time is very focused on such other things and as that estrogen and progesterone and testosterone starts to play havoc you know suddenly our eyes are open to actual real possibilities of what life could be for most of us for many of us of course we know that it's really really difficult unless you understand what's happening to you and then you kind of uh, you know, you're able to harness it. Um, and we did have a podcast, we've got a podcast as well, where uh, with, with a wonderful lady where she actually said, you know, it's unleashing the feminine, it's unleashing the woman um, that may have been suppressed for a very long time, the actual, what does it actually mean to be a woman? Uh, not a mother, not a wife, you know, not a daughter, not a carer, not an anything, but you as a woman individually. Um, so I think, you know, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. Midlife crisis sounds horrific, doesn't it? But actually it sounds like to me that it's more, more like a bit of an awakening. I think it's definitely an awakening and it's a chance. I, I've unleashed Joe in the last year or so. And, and the Joe pre family, pre kids was someone who would go parachuting and would just book a weekend away the night before and would say yes to things she wanted to say yes to and happily say no things to things she didn't want to do. The Joe that I've become through parenting and, and having those deeper relationships with extended family partners and so on, um, compromises has to, and has to, and willingly does so. Yes. The Joe that is now being unleashed um, because menopause has given me that wake up call. And I, I've, I'm one of the, the women that have had a really tough time. And I'm happy to talk more about that. HRT has been an absolute lifesaver, but not an instant panacea. Um, and I'm unleashing a Joe now that I'm going to Finland in two weeks time. Now that's nuts. I'm going in half term. So my three kids are at home and my husband has said, yes, go. If this means so much to you, if this is important to you. If your gut's telling you, yes, we'll make it work. I would never have dreamed of asking for that a year ago. Um, and when I say asking, I didn't really be clear. He, he, it's, it's, it's a family unit. We have to decide these things together. It's not my husband giving me permission. It's that we decide this as a unit. And I'm going and I cannot wait. I've got six days of not having to cook a meal, make a bed, do a school run, worry about anything other than phoning home and just checking in on them. And, and then doing things for me, off adventuring, seeing the Northern Lights, ice dipping, skiing, all sorts of things. And I am truly excited. And there is not a single bit of guilt I have let go of the guilt and that is huge for me yeah. because mum yeah. guilt is a very big deal. It's a big thing. It's a real big thing. And I think, again, a lot of women um, would be, a lot of women I know struggle with that, you know, even to get an exercise session in, you know, it's like, yeah, but, yeah, but, or to, you know, do something for themselves. Um, so, you know, very much, I think it's important to focus on you as, as this person, as this woman that you're kind of, you are really not kind of becoming but you are um i'd love to hear a little bit more joe as well about you know the coaching so you've decided to become a, a life coach um has that journey helped you to make the decisions that you are making now has has it given you this because you sound very confident you sound um it's all things about well thought through is that something that you learn while you were studying and, and have become a life coach now? Uh, yes and no, I'm, I'm a thinker and what life coaching has helped me to do is get out of my head and go with my gut more. Um, so that's been really, I mean, the, the, the coaching's come about because ever since I was a teenager, I've always had this desire to be, well, two things, to, to teach or share knowledge um, and just to help people. I, 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 will, I mean, this morning is a perfect example, walking around a, a reservoir and a guy stopped me asked a question about the swans and I ended up having a 20 minute conversation with this guy. He's now signed up to join the open water swimming group that I'm part of. We're going to connect and meet down there. It's a complete stranger. I've always done that. Just talked to people and found their story. And just, I find it so interesting. I'm so curious. So the coaching feels really natural. And I looked at various options, knowing that my other business was just not fulfilling 
that need in me, teaching, further education, teaching, um, counselling, um, going back and doing a degree in psychotherapy and so on. And coaching seemed to be the best fit um, because it's not about me solving other people's problems. It's about me being there as a sounding board, someone who listens, someone who doesn't judge. And there's so much power. You know, you have friends where that you talk to them and they immediately just say, oh, I get it. Yeah, he's awful. Yeah, you dump him or whatever. They immediately are on your side. And that's lovely. And that's what friendship should be. But sometimes you don't want to hear that dump him. You just want to you just want to sound out and then you want to come to your own conclusions and you want to test those conclusions. And that's what I do as a coach. And it's so empowering for the women that I'm working with. Um, and that's, yeah, that's, I just love it. And I wish I could coach all day, every day and not have to do any of the marketing or the business building stuff. I don't want to do any of that. I just want to connect with people. Yeah. 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 I know what you mean when you're in a, that is, that is one of the things when you're running your own business is, you know, being every, wearing every hat, as they say, um, to, yeah. to get it to where it is, but you've got to do all those things as well to, to make it, make it, um, what it is and make it successful. Um, and if you were as, as a life coach, as a woman, perhaps who now is listening to this and thinking, oh, wow. Okay. I, I think I am going through a midlife crisis then. I think I am kind of, ha these things are happening to me. What do I do? You know, how do I, where do I start with this now? What do I do? What would you, like just, you know, a couple of maybe two or three points where, uh, points of advice that you would be able to share with them, whether that's personal to you or whether that's something that you, um, you know, you, you share with your, your clients and how you work, but just a bit of advice for someone who's sitting there thinking, like, okay, do you know what? I do need to do something. This is, I can, this is me. I hear, I see myself in what they're saying. Yeah, I think um, try and work out when in your day to day you feel totally present and com complete and comfortable, whether that's going for a walk, whether it's time with your kids, whether it's washing up, cooking a decent meal, whatever it might be. And just try, try and create more of those moments. So if you really hate doing X, Y, Z, but you really love doing ABC, then sandwich them. Do ABC, stick X, Y, Z in the middle, get it done because it has to be done or don't do it at all if it doesn't. And then do a bit more of what really makes you feel good and start to extend that time. Give yourself permission to sit and read a book and close the door on the kids and, and put a do not enter sign. Just find those little things. There's loads of big things you can do, but they take more planning, maybe money, maybe other people agreeing, but taking five minutes to read a book or 20 minutes to go out for a walk or 10 minutes to watch an episode of Scooby-Doo curled up with your child, that those are, those, those are easy things. They don't cost money. They don't take much time. Um, so that's what I would recommend in terms of a starting point. Mm -hmm. um, the things that I do um, each day and each week that I would uh, sort of encourage you to explore is both around water. So a very simple thing is to be hydrated. So I start every day by drinking a pint of water. It, it starts the day hydrated. I think food, nutrition, exercise are so, so key through menopause, even more key. Things that worked before will no longer work for you. You'll need to change things up. But starting with water, just plain cold water. Um, or you know maybe a hot water and, a, and a, a squeeze of lemon as soon as you wake up and then keeping going making sure you hydrate through the day and the second thing to do with water is and I'm not suggesting everyone goes out and do that does this but I'm suggesting they find something that ticks these boxes so cold water swimming for me is something I've started in the last four or five months I never thought I'd be swimming in just my swimming costume in January in ice but it ticks so many boxes it's exercise it's a challenge it's social because you're doing it with other people it's that sense of achievement. I've done it. I've already achieved something before I start my day. Um, it's being inspired by other people, meeting amazing other people. In fact, we all joke that we're crazy, but they're my kind of crazy. So my recommendation is go and find your kind of crazy and hang out with them. Mm, no, it's, it's so the, the great bits of advice. And actually it tells, it kind of comes really nicely into the bit that I was going to ask you about, which I al always ask at the end, which is, you know, what kind of advice would you give to people to share something that you are doing that you feel that somebody you know that may benefit or help others and that's kind of answered that question really beautifully actually and I do you know I think from what I get from that is the first you know the first bit of what you said was actually it was really interesting for me while you were saying that to think through my day because quite often I get bogged down with just doing stuff um and what is it that makes me happy um but like you're right, you've got to do things that make you happy and make you 
the way you're present, but also sometimes sandwich in those things that perhaps aren't always the, the kind of, you know, tick every little box and make you happy. Um, so I like that balance between the two. Um, and I love the fact that you are doing something where you are feeling part of a community, you know, and I think the community aspect of things is so important. Um, we, we, we can feel so alone and exactly as you said, whatever that looks like for you, whether it's dancing or cold water swimming or it's, um, you know, uh, a book club or whatever it may be, it's that sense of community, I think, that is so powerful uh, and means that you're not alone. Yeah, community and connection is it's right up there. You know, I need to talk to people every day. It just that yeah. gives me energy. That makes me feel grounded. Yeah. Um, and when you do it with people that you trust, that are your kind of crazy, so to speak, yeah. Yeah. it's incredibly fulfilling. It is. It is. You're right. You know, I do. I, I was like you, kind of. I, 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 I think I'm. I don't want to connect with people, but actually, I love it. I'm a. Pe- I, you know, I train. I train people. I, I have women on my program. My programs. I'm constantly chatting to people, making sure everyone's all right. What are they doing? Da, 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 and really understanding, as you said, and being curious about their development and where they're going. So yeah, you know, it does take a certain type of person to be a, a coach as you are. Um, and uh, you know, I think it's wonderful that you're you're using your energy to help others is is just it's just fabulous so it's 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 really really lovely um joe before we kind of finish off because it has been it's been so enlightening speaking to you and i'm sure that some of the women well i'm sure that most of our audience would love to know a little bit more about you but if people wanted to connect with you find out a little bit more about you what you do um i know you've got a facebook page i know you you know you're you're like you said the, that sense of community is quite strong with you um would you be able to share where people can find you because that would be really useful yeah i mean the community angle is the is the most important bit to me i'm building a community on facebook i would so much rather build a facebook for, uh, a community face to face like meeting yeah. people but you know this is an age of, of technology so um the group is called Right Side of 40, Midlife Reimagined. I would love to see you there. You don't have to be 40. You can be under 40 if you want to be. You do have to be a woman, though. Um, if you're a man, you particularly think that there may be something you want to learn from me or your wife or whatever, please point in my direction or just friend me, Joe Cumberpatch, happy to take friend um, friend requests. I do have a podcast, so that's also called Right Side of 40, Midlife Reimagined. Brilliant. But basically, um, yeah, please do connect with me. I'm, I'm just genuinely wanted to help, and I'm still working out how I'm going to do that. Yeah. Um, so I'm really just looking at you. Come, come join me. Come tell me what you need from me. What yeah. I would leave you with is just one one thought. It's a quote by Mark Twain, which I think is really interesting because age is such a such a thing in our in our society. And he has a quote that says, "Age is an issue of mind over matter. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter." And I'm living by that. I'm I'm in my prime right now. I can yeah. I'm I'm just so much better than I was ten years ago, twenty years ago. And I've got so much more to give. And yeah. I'm going to make the most of the years ahead of me. Oh, it's wonderful. And I absolutely live by that rule completely. Exactly as you said, I'm feeling better than I've ever felt. Um, And it does unleash this, the person that perhaps, you know, like you said, but, you know, different person or maybe the same person, but, you know, with different, uh, different priorities um, and, and different and a zest for life really and and you know wanting to live and experience life to the fullest i think which is wonderful that we have the opportunity to do that um are you on instagram or anywhere like that do you have a website at all joe yeah so i'm, I'm on instagram so just joe cumberpatch on instagram and then my website is uh midlife oh i forgot what it's called now midlife reimagined.com okay okay that is wonderful joe thank you so much for speaking to us today um thank you i've learned a lot i've really enjoyed the conversation because it's really wonderful to hear from another woman who is uh, being creative who's doing things that are making her happy um uh, and above all is is sharing her experience with other women um which is is really a wonderful thing it makes the world a better place for sure so thank you so much for joining